Hey Magic Makers, Moby Ridley here. Welcome to the Celebrity Panel from TerraFest 2023. Special guests you may recognize from things like the court remark from the O.J. Simpson trial, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and Hellraiser Judgment. They had some awesome stories to share with us and words of wisdom. I hope you this enjoy. This gentleman here was, I, I'll be the interviewer here. <laughs> um, this gentleman here was the uh, court drawer. Courtroom artist. Court, courtroom artist during the, for over a year of the O.J. Simpson case. Wow. And so, so and it just, just sort of talk. It's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the most watched trials I think that's ever, ever had been. And most of us knew. It's the only did. trial that's ever been watched by the mass public in history. Yeah. Period. Yeah. I know that I was. What other me trial in. have you seen mass produced except Johnny Depp? Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? There's no, there's well, how about the, the Nuremberg trial? Well, damn it, we're talking 50, okay. 40 years before <laughs> this. <you know? laughs> I don't think they had television then either. So they no, I think they, actually, I think they did. I think it was For, broadcast. Was it really? I think so. Well, yeah. I think so. I think she's right. Why are you here? Right. What kinds of things do you want to hear about? Well, I think in general, you know, I mean, yeah. from the start of just excitement. Yeah, what? Myself. The experience. I mean, yeah. obviously, y'all are all, all, yeah. all here for different reasons. But, like, what was the ex I mean, I say experience and just as, like, what did you get out of it? Like, you know, I think we all have this preconceived notion, like, oh, you probably felt this way or that way or that way about something. But you're like, oh, no, it totally wasn't like that. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, this is how I got here. Or this is what I did. So, for me, that's it's the why and you know how can you got tell me tell us more you got you keep other people why are you here what what are you curious about i'm pretty much with them the experience to hear the experience of, of, of our making yeah. movies and his drawing maybe yep. how, how i mean you already got me with oj simpson so. <laughs> and i'd like to hear more yeah I guess that points to me. Uh, yeah. Another comic. Another <laughs> comic. <laughs> We're yeah, talking about O.J. Simpson. Yeah. Yeah. His drawings of him. Yeah. I was the courtroom artist for NBC News uh, for, oh, 10 years before I got that case to do. Um, initially, I was hired to go down and draw the jury, just the jury. And I couldn't, you know, be selected, those people. And I wasn't even allowed to show what they really looked like. Either. Uh, the judge had this, you know, stamp put on my pictures, you know, Ito approved, and if he didn't, if that wasn't on there, I couldn't show the pictures, you know, so it was pretty strict, and um, four months was jury selection, it lasted four months, oh my god, it was the most ridiculously boring time, but, uh, you know, finally they, they got the jury together, and then, you know, it began, now, they have cameras in the courtroom, what am I doing there? <laughs> because the cameras really don't show you everything, hardly anything, actually. The camera focuses on the witness, and maybe right. over the shoulder of the attorney asking the question. But you don't see the jury, you don't see the reaction of the audience, you know, you might see the judge occasionally. Um, so what I did was I just do everything that uh, the camera would not see, you know. And I saw a lot of things that people wouldn't believe, and I didn't even believe, but they were, they like had Like what? Them. Like what was the most suffering? Well, there were quite a few. One, one was the, the coroner, one of the two coroners testifying against O.J. When he was finished his testimony, he got off the stand and he walked around to the defense table and a picture of it, and he hugged uh, Robert Shapiro. Now, Robert Shapiro is destroying this guy on the witness stand. Wow. And he came huh. over and he gave him a big hug. That was wow. pretty weird. Why? why, why? Did well, he, did, was he trying to take care of Robert Shapiro? I don't know what he was yeah. trying to do, but it was the weirdest thing in court I've ever seen. It could have been very, um, uh, you know, Christ turned the light, you know, turned the cheek if you had slapped. Yeah, turned, it could have been. I forgive you. I forgive you. you. Yeah, you're just Love doing your job. Love peace Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could have I have been. my tail. It was very strange, though, either way. Oh, you know. um, and then, what was Shapiro's reaction? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I mean, you still get paid. You never see that happen. I mean, it's weird. It's very strange. Very, very strange. So, I have so many stories with OJ. Oh, my God. Um, 
the, the uh, there was a time when I was I wanted to get his signature. I wanted his signature. So uh, how am I going to? And then once you're out of the courtroom, they they close it. You can't go back in. You know. Uh, so I figured, how am I going to get back in there? You know. And lucky break, the uh, staff, Judge Ito's staff, called me and they said we wanted to buy a picture of all of us and Ito, and you know from you. So, no. Okay. Well, I said, in order to do that, I have to come back into the courtroom. <laughs> and they said, they said, okay, when? I said, now. And I went, and OJ was in court, Bill Hodgman, the DA, and Marsha Clark, Johnny Cochran, uh, Shapiro. I had them all sign this drawing, this wide shot. And I, I had it for 20 years until last year. I sold it for lots of money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does everybody, not everyone here knows who O.J. Simpson is, was, or has ever heard of that trial before? Yeah, yeah. a lot of young people. But explaining it is kind of gruesome, so I don't know. Oh, well. Who, who doesn't know about O.J.? <laughs> no, I know about it. Yeah, yeah. Is anybody the ghost back here saying she loves gruesome? Go ahead. No, okay. Well, I mean. I bring it up because it's a terrifying. I saw him play football. Ford Bronco sales went up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, he was an NFL um, uh, quarterback. Linebacker. linebacker. I almost said linebacker. Played for the Buffalo Bills. I don't know anything. Who uh, mur uh, allegedly <laughs> murdered. Oh, he, he murdered. He murdered his wife. Well, uh, it, they it, were not they were very calm and, this, and, and this young man. <laughs> and a young, the young man who was a waiter at a restaurant nearby. Who lived in their guest house. Mm -hmm. oh, really? no, he didn't live, no, he didn't live in their no, guest no, house. No, no, Caitlin, no. right? Cato. Caitlin. 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 So that's the trial then. And then he, tr he came to protect her and, and the guy murdered whoever did it. Yeah, murdered both murdered of them. Both the of Kardashian them. sisters and the daughters of the lawyer that was that got OJ off the hook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Wow. Yeah. But justice has its way of rearing huh? its ugly head. Because, and why she should know more about it. I'm talking about that Kim Kardashian and Kim Kardashian. Those are the daughters yeah, so of the lawyer in Las Vegas and said, so, yeah. Got yeah. Okay. Somebody got arrested for stealing. Yeah. She was a sports kid. Well, this is all memorabilia. This is like and 90. He's still, he's still in jail. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no, no he's so. out. He's oh out. Oh my God. I thought he, they would he got, he got three years, what? but he only, he only served uh, 15 months. Yeah, yeah it's because he, he broke into a storage locker to steal his own memorabilia. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, well, shame. I thought they got That's insane. Great to have Now, I'm not going to steal a floor here, but I do want to tell you that over the last 30 years, I've covered trials that range from everyone from uh, the Night Stalker, Mr. Ramirez, to the Menendez brothers, uh, of course, O.J. Simpson, and in Hollywood, you know, everyone I know, everyone you've seen on television, everyone has been, except Diane, has been in court. Uh, you know, uh, I have the, to go the biggest them. point somewhere. So, you know, in my travails here, I've met every entertainer in the world because they all come to court, you know. So, anyway, I talk to myself. Now it's time for these two. You can talk to me. Do you guys have specific questions for me yeah. or for Diane about her experiences? How long did it take you to get all that? Uh, Diane, I have, what was it like working on the DS9 set? No. I, 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 well, okay. Are we sure on this? Yeah, yeah. No, no, he's good. He is. Do, do you want us to? I, okay, turn off for a second. <laughs> oh my God, I'm up against this incredible act. And I went into the bathroom and I thought, and I had this water bottle with me because I always drink water. And I thought, okay, I'll be drunk at the scene. I'm going to be drunk at the scene. And, and I took the water bottle with water in it. And I do this sense memory of drunkenness, which is fabulous, because I hardly drink at all. Which is that you, yeah. okay, who, who wants to be an actor? Possibly? Oh, no. Yes! <laughs> okay, so I'm going to teach you. This is sense memory for drunkenness. <laughs> but we're in Texas, and you probably don't need sense memory. You can just drink a lot. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, you give in to the sensation of drunkenness. This is Uta Hagen, one of my great teachers yes. in New York City. You, and she taught Meryl Streep too. And you give in to the drunkenness. Where do you go? Everyone shut your eyes right now. You give in to the drunkenness. Where do you feel drunk? Or if, you, if you're too young, maybe cough medicine, where you felt a little woozy. Okay, so you give in to the drunkenness. Where do you feel drunk in your body? 
I feel it in my my elbows, especially and my knees, but especially my elbows. Some people feel it in their hands. Where so locate where it is in your body you feel drunk. Give in to the sensation. Give in to the sensation. And now try to overcome it. Open your eyes. So I'm really not drunk at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, my elbows are itching, that's all. <laughs> okay, so so anyway, I went into the scene with this water bottle, and I was drunk and laughing, laughing, and I've gotten two movies because of my laugh. I guess I got this one probably because of my laugh, too. And then I just, and then I just was like, ah, you know, like this, and they gave, they gave it to me. But I really didn't know how much techno babble there was going to be, and it's so hard. You can turn the camera on now. <laughs> but um, it's so hard, this techno babble. I don't know how people do it. And that Brett Sp Spader? Spiner. 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 Yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God, how he did that? I don't know how he did that. It's terrifying. Man. So, um, but I love Nana on the set. She, had to she told me she had been a ballerina. She was incredibly disciplined. I think she was a single mother. Right. And she worked really, really hard. Right. And people have come up to me. I was just at the Las Vegas um, Star Trek convention. And people were coming up saying Deep Space Nine was their favorite. But I, I've never watched any of them. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I love the original Star Trek. And he was there. What's it, Shatner? Really? Yeah. William Shatner. And, um, and I met um, uh, Michael Dorn in the green room. We ate, I, and I didn't know who he was, um, but I you knew he was a deep voice like this. And we were talking about theater, and he's still doing theater. He doesn't really want to do TV and movies now. He loves theater. And we were talking about Shakespeare. And then um, Gates, Precious Gates, I knew in Gates McFadden, I knew in New York, theater actors. Yes, theater actors. And um, we had a book. I love the guy I played opposite. And he's passed away. And I was so shocked at hearing it about a year and a half ago at another convention on the Hollywood show. And someone came up to me and said, um, his name is Bill Ludke. He was unbelievable. And I was so terrified of the techno battle. He came to my trailer. And we would go over the lines over and over because I couldn't remember the stuff. And I would start slapping them, and he kind of hit me up, slapping, but he jostled me back. And we had this great chemistry. And we, in the story, had been lovers before, and we had the best time on the set. I loved this man. I never saw him again. That's a problem with doing TV and movies. Theater, you really bond with people, and this one knows theater like crazy. You bond, and you stay friends for life. But in movies and TV, it's so fleeting. It's rare you can really hold on to a long, good friendship. And um, I just, I love Bill Lefty. What a fabulous guy. Precious. And we had really a good time. We shot the, the cave scene in the Hollywood Hills. And it's right there. You just go up the hill, and it's right there. What's that street name? Um, Drive. No, it's on the Hollywood Hill side. It's, no. Anyway, it, it, it's, it's Holland. Holland. and I, I shot Pee Wee's Big Holiday in a hot tub, in a hot tub <laughs> scene in, in the same, by the same cave. It's just extraordinary. It's kind of like reincarnation, you know, having different lifetimes on this planet. That's, I love to think that way. I just came up with it like that. Well, it's, 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 it's actor, just it's actor reincarnation. I never thought of that either. Yeah. Now, don't take it. I'm gonna uh, so it. I will read this. I feel like. I feel like. We got proof you came up with it too. I like to read it, but I won't take it. Oh. Ryan oh. Salinger once said. Right. So All right, so it, now it's your turn. What? Two hours. Well, she has how long did the makeup take it off? How long did it take to take it off, though? Uh, well, not two hours, but it took a while because it's glued on, and so they have to use the solution. You start at the bottom and, and start peeling it off. So by the time it's off, 
and you've eaten the cold pizza while they're doing it because you're starving. Um, by the time it's off, it's ruined, and then they, they, it's, you know, they, they send it off to the Hollywood, I mean, to the prop store in Hollywood and auction it to the highest bidder. It's very strange. And you never see your fake skin again. Do you have one? I don't. No. I have some pins, but I don't have any of the skin. But I, people come up to my table who bought some of my skin and have me sign it. It's very <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's very strange. Like that. <laughs> Out of the hermetically sealing plastic, they'll take it out. I'm like, that's just gonna rot. Yeah, they pay good yeah, money no, for it. Just gonna rot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've had people like a square this big. Of it. And then I've had oh, other really? people who have a little more, who are a little more fluid, who have yeah. who like, here's half your face. Are <laughs> <laughs> your cheekbones? Exactly like you. It's just the skin. It's just the skin. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's pieces of the skin. They like cut it into pieces yeah. and they auction it. Yeah, it's not a full mask. How many, it's just how many were there? Are. That's just there's the rubber. There's no ears that's and there's no that, the rubber eyes are just holes. But what was it? So was it just was it just one? Was it just one that they're like cutting up, or did, were there more than? However many days you have on the set is, have uh, many is how many they create that are just on the on the. The, the head that's that's the cast of your head, but they've made other copies of it or whatever. Anyway, the, basically a weird head, but they're not weird heads. Maybe they're weird heads. So they have as many makeups as you're going to be on the set as Pinhead already made, and the pins are already attached to them, and it's and they're just attached to these styrofoam heads with like straight pins, and uh, the pins are the pins that are the pins in the makeup are plastic, they're very lightweight. And because if they had any weight to them, they would flop. You right. know, when you talk, it would kill the illusion. And it's two large appliances. One goes up over the eyebrows and over the ears, and the other goes under the eyebrows and under the ears. So the only thing not covered is, and then there's a lower lip piece, oh, yeah. three pieces. The other thing not covered is around the eyes and around the ears. And your upper lip? Yeah, oh, the upper lip is also in everything. Uh, everything's covered. How did yeah. you speak? The very <laughs> small <laughs> words. <laughs> but the glue they use is like, it's like super glue for faces, you know. Like, I think that's why it takes so long to, to work it off. It was really annoying. It was so much, yeah. so annoying to get it taken off. I always think about you guys doing the makeup and all these films. You know, and I, you know, I could act, but I don't want to do that. I, don't, you know. I look at Doug Jones's career. You know, the Guillermo del Toro's muse, who did uh, the Shape of Water, oh, yeah. and Pan's Labyrinth, and he did all. He was the monster of Pan's Labyrinth, or was he? He was two monsters. Oh my God! That's the same guy. And he was also. He's done so many parts of that. He's done. Yeah, has anyone here seen a show, a TV show called Salem? I have. The Witches. Oh yes. Yeah, I've okay. it. It's on well, FX, right? Yes. I, yeah. Yes, I think so. Yes. Or what? WGN. WGN. I've heard of WGN. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, um, there was a woman who was my body double when I I play um, a witch. <laughs> The wise elder witch, uh -huh. and um, they had this body double, and they put, they, they had, they were torturing me. The, the leaders of the town were torturing me, and they had my arms up like this. I was standing, and it was like four in the morning. It was raining in was in Shreveport, Louisiana, and, and they had built the whole town. And so my arms are here like this, and then they took the body double who was double jointed and she just she was unbelievable and she could she did this weird thing with her arms at, like they were torturing me but it, you know it was it was her and she naturally did it and then they put my face on the back of her head and she climbed up the tree oh so that it looked like she was climbing up the tree like this climbing up and then it was my laugh which is <laughs> you know, he's kind of <laughs> laughing and climbing up the tree like this, but it was I just. Watched this show. I watched this show. It was the first season. Did you have scenes oh, with Morgana Shaw? Oh, that name is weird. No. She's a small, petite, redhead no. with huge eyes. No. Because she was the madam in this first season. The madam of the warehouse. The madam of the warehouse. 
And then she came back in the third season. I know, I know that Overly went to no, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I got no sense. See, this is the example of people, ships passing in the night. It happens all the time. I've done two movies with Morgan Fairchild. I've never met her. Right? Huh? Crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. You have scenes with her, you know? Or, or you do have scenes with her, but you're in, they're on different days anyway because they have doubles or stand-ins. Or yeah, it's weird. But uh, these, uh, these, bo these body doubles that is, are... They're, they're brilliant, these people who do the stunts for us. Mm. They're brilliant. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, like well, so more questions. Yes. How is it working with the yeah. TV? With who? With Paul Rubin's TV. Mm. We're talking span of um, 30, 35, 37 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, well. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, the one who called me. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He changed a lot after the scandal. Sure. But I, we did Batman Returns right after the scandal happened. Yeah. He was, um, he was scared, you know, at that point. Sure. He was in shell shock. And he told me that when he stood up with the MTV Awards right after the scandal, yeah. he said, Hi, how many big jokes lately? Yeah. But then the whole audience rose and gave him a standing ovation. He has no memory of it. Oh, oh, how interesting. I was watching your memory. He had no memory. And the other thing was, he, he was scared, he was nervous to do, we all get nervous. And he was nervous doing um, Batman Returns, after, especially after the scandal. And so um, he, um, he had me up to his house, and he said, I want to rehearse with you. So he rehearsed, but he wore a baseball cap because people on the other side of the canyon were taking photos of him from in his house. Oh, wow. So we couldn't go out to eat. We had to stay in, he ordered in, and he had the baseball cap on so that he wouldn't be recognized in his own house. Yeah. And the way the canyons are out there, you can. Oh, they're like this. Yeah. So yeah. you just have to be like 200 feet away and you're on another hill mm -hmm. that you can shoot. It was horrible. That's, that's, that's sad. But yet he cracked me up in Batman Returns before the first scene with, you know, the where we're the rich couple with cobble pops and we're, we're uh, turned around and here's our baby in the cage, you know, the penguin baby, and the cat walks by and grabs the yeah. cat. <laughs> that woman, that, that creature who played the penguin as a baby was the most beautiful young woman. She was a midget and she was beautifully proportioned. And she had the most them. gorgeous face, and they put a penguin's beak on her. And I thought, oh my God, I said, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. And she was in this tiny little cage. And then the, the cage was had rubber bars. So when the cat walked by, they then, they substituted for a stuffed animal and, you know, pushed it, she pushed it through the, 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 the rubber bars. The bars yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. Movie, movie magic. Yeah, movie and, magic. And Paul was cracking me up. Even after the scandal, he was cracking me up right before we started the scene. And I, had, and I was preparing very deeply, preparing our child. His driver was crazy. We don't sleep. This is a nightmare. This child is a monster. And I'm preparing all this. And, and Tim, right before he said an action, Tim Burton, he says, he starts saying ah, some kind of funny joke, and I said, "Shut up, Paul!" Because <laughs> I was howling with laughter. I went, like, "Shut up! Shut up!" And then Tim goes, "Add action!" And we turn around, and I'm trying not to cry, laugh, and my upper lip is twitching. <laughs> So, yeah, that's about it. Yes, okay. More questions for these lovely people. <laughs> oh, my God. I just remember you in Salem, though. Um, yeah, Rose. Yes, Rose. Yes. I have to watch it again. It's very Season weird one. seeing her head. 
which I think you may have seen too. Oh, sorry. They, they did a whole plaster cast of my head because I get I hadn't seen it, you remember. I know. And I wanted the head to go back. It's been some years since I've watched it. It's been a while. Yeah. I wanted my head so badly, and I didn't recognize myself. That's the weird thing is we don't really know what we look like in the outside world. Would you play in Batman Returns? Yes, Doug. Would you play in Batman Returns? The Penguin's Mom. Oh, that's the Penguin's Mom. I watched that as a kid. So it's oh, rub it in. Rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I didn't mean it like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, I'm ageless. Yeah. No, 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 no. So, um, anyway, it was weird to have a head with your, you know, the red hair yeah. and the freckles. And you know the little lopsided face, a little bit, you know, from sleeping on my right side. It was so weird to see this in a little bit of movie lips, and I thought this doesn't really look like me. Oh yes, oh yes, it looks like you. And so and then we, you know, the straws, you know, to make it, you know. And and I said, can I have this head? Because I thought this would be great for Thanksgiving. If you have friends over and you come out with a pot and you do open it, and here's here's my head. You know, I thought that that would be great. But they wouldn't give it up. They would not give up this head. Even after I was finished. During the series, I did six episodes. They probably but, thought they were gonna auction it off with a prop store. Probably. Yeah. That's right. He's pulling LJ. What? He's pulling LJ. Did you do the same thing with my head? You, with my head. You know, it was in LA. We were shooting the movie in Oklahoma City, and I asked Gary, the director who did the headcast, "Can I have that?" And he said, "Sure, you can." And then we get to Oklahoma City, and he doesn't have it. And then he. After the movie, we um, wrap on the movie. He goes back to LA, stops his his business, which he had for the like 20 years, um, which is called um, Two Hours in the Dark. But he was an effects artist, like a guru of it. He was like, oh, that probably ended up in a dumpster. Sorry. Oh no! Some have value. For us, they have value. And so he also could have taken that head and made more masks. Yeah. Perfectly. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna do. They do that a lot. The other thing I mean to interject, but I do mean to interject. Yes. Okay. No, I, I do something else in the film industry that I haven't talked about, and that is I'm a storyboard artist. All right. So do you know what storyboards are? Yeah. Yes. All right. So it's illustrated uh, camera directions, and, and you know uh, they throw all of those away. When they're done. They throw them all away. That's awful. I, I did the film Along Came Polly, and I, the director really liked me a lot. He even had me in the film. I was cut out. But anyway, he gave me, yeah, well, no, would, he gave me the original. So that's cool. There's a little gift to, to uh, Chris. I'm going to give him a couple pages because Along Came Polly is a scary movie. So I mean, it's a story for him. But I've story for in films like Batman and Robin. And, anyway, I. I've storyboarded, and just to let you know, storyboards are illustrated depictions of the scenes that are going to be filmed. So if you have uh, a guy shooting a rifle, you see him like this, then you see what he sees, you know, a picture of it. And you see a shot of maybe the cameras traveling this way across, and you see the car coming, you see the bullet hit, the, another angle from the top rolls around. All these things are done by a director, but with me, or a storyboard artist like me. And what they do is they tell you what they want. And then you you design the shots, you know, and that's so I'm essentially like a director, but I don't yeah. ever call myself. Yeah. Uh, and I've done this for uh, 60 films, uh, too many music videos to count, uh, too many commercials, TV commercials to count, and also. What's your favorite part? The money it pays. <laughs> <laughs> what is the, what's the biggest uh, music so video, sample. like the biggest, most popular music video you've seen? Um, Did you know? I'm just curious. One of the biggest was Beyonce Ego. Wow. Yeah, that's a big and I'm very friendly with her choreographer Frank Gatson. He's a brilliant guy. I've worked for him for years. Yeah. You know, and it's when they find somebody they can trust, they call you back again to do their next film or their next, you know, uh, project or whatever it is. Yeah. So when you were doing the paper and how long does it take to sketch out? Like, well, it depends what the sketch is. If it's a lot of people, it'll take an hour or two. If it's one person, it'll take about 20 minutes. 
Okay. And you yeah. said upstairs, it's from memory, right? Not, not all the time. Not I mean, time. yeah, it, like there's an occasion, for example, uh, I have a drawing that I did of the murder scene in the O.J. Simpson trial, which shows the bodies laid out on the pavement and they were found. Uh, this is not allowed to be seen by anybody, but they let me draw it. So what they did was they said, get your pencils and paper out here, go to that room with that officer, and you can look at the picture for 30 seconds. Thank you. That's it. And I went and I stared at the photo for 30 seconds and I came out and I did an illustration, you know, in full color of what I saw. That's you hot. have that upstairs? Yeah. That's how it's pretty uh, riveting. So, you know, that's how you have to do it from memory on occasion, you know, but uh, it doesn't usually come up like that. Usually you're there to draw what's in front of you, you know what I mean? So, but um, yeah, that's how that. So, between 20 minutes and an hour and a half from drawing. How did you go from being a, a, a regular, a regular a, nobody's a regular artist, but how did you go from being a standard artist? Mm -hmm. You know, you we went to art school, I'm sure. How did you go from that to getting into courtroom? Well, I'll tell my story again. One person has heard it already, but uh, I'll tell you. I'm, I'm writing this into a book, which would hopefully be a film. This is an unbelievable story, and no other person has ever can duplicate the story. <laughs> so, I was an artist in Philadelphia where I grew up, oh. and it's 1975. And I want my friend knows my friends know I want to be a courtroom artist. I want to work in the movie business. That's what I want to do. You know, and in Philadelphia there's no film business yet. So uh, I go for courtroom art because courtroom art puts your artwork on television in front of millions of people and has your name there. This is what I, this is what I need. So how do you get that job though? Uh, well, my friend says, look, I'll tell you what. I'm a piece of photographer for the newspapers. I have a press pass. I'll give you tonight. New Year's Eve of the Bicentennial. Come with me to it, go yourself to Independence Hall. The inaugural event of the Bicentennial. The first thing they do is take the Liberty Bell out of Independence Hall for the first time in history. And they moved it down the street. So go draw this, you know, and maybe somebody will notice you. Now there's 250,000 people there. I'm going to get noticed. <laughs> Okay, so I got a pad of paper, and I'm bundled up, and I go down to the front of the Independence Hall. I got, you know, my press pass allows me this, and I can see everything that's happening, but I can't draw. It's 32 degrees below zero. It's snowing, sleeting, hailing, raining. You can draw a thing. Freezing, just freezing. So I went home without anything, and uh, my phone rings at 3.30, and it's the guy that gave me the press pass. And he says, uh, the, the Philadelphia Daily News wants your illustration. I said, well, what about all the cameramen that are out there? He said, they couldn't get a, a picture because of the weather. It was too bad. And the strobe lights wouldn't come off. So we want your picture. And I said, can you bring it in? And I said, get here by noon, you know? I said, okay. So I didn't have a picture, though. <laughs> I did it from memory. memory. 30 by 40 inches, ink wash painting with the bell wrapped in plastic being drawn out with by the you know the guards, the police, the paint the, the people, people in the windows looking out, the raindrops hitting off the building, all the plastic, photographers, everything. That's amazing. That's storyboarding right there. That is it. That's that's fabulous thing you do that by How the, did you make memory. all the individual faces? I just made them up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no one's really going to be like, hey, you know, it doesn't really matter. Well, people don't really care that, you know, that, that what they look like. It's they care about the, the action of the scene, you know. Now, here's what happened. So I, I'm, in the, I'm in the newspaper office, and they, they love the picture, and they signed a check for me. And the very first question they asked me, the first question they asked me was, have you ever done courtroom art before? Guys, that's why I went down to Independence Hall and see 250,000 people was to get noticed as a courtroom artist, and I did. Wow. Nice. Nice. Oh, the punchline to that story <laughs> is that 20 years later, I covered the biggest trial in the history of humankind for the two largest networks on earth, NBC News and CNN. Mm -hmm. That's the punchline. That's my story. That's how I got to be a courtroom. So I don't think anybody else is going to follow that path. Nor could they. What's, What's your favorite name? piece of work that you've done? It would be among my fantasy illustrations, which uh, they're 
very detailed pen and ink illustrations, you know, that I do. Very psychedelic uh, trip out, so to speak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's all stream of consciousness where there's no pre-composition. I don't lay out a composition first, you know, I just, oh, I like that line, and that becomes a woman, and that woman becomes this and that, and the other thing. And kind of free, you know, it's an infinite amount of imagery upon imagery. What he's saying is stream of consciousness. This is... The greatest way to work as an artist, whether acting, writing, painting, if you work as much as it possible to let yourself relax enough to let the unconscious come up. Mm -hmm. That is the greatest art you can create. Because the conscious mind is like a little, you know, icebergs? Mm -hmm. It's a Titanic. Oh, yeah, it's the iceberg is at the top of the ocean and it's a little tiny piece compared to and they liken it to this is the conscious mind above the sea level and then there's this enormous almost like continent like iceberg underneath and that's the size of the unconscious and more mm -hmm. probably the size of the ocean mm -hmm. so if you can tap in all of us with whatever you want in life you can tap into the unconscious what power is there for you? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. The stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. And yeah, very I've good hundreds of them. You can, if you come upstairs, you can see a couple of them. Oh, I have them up here. I, there's a couple of the portraits that I actually did. Of, uh, David Bowie, uh, oh. Tupac, and I was the other one, Elvis. Did you meet? Did you meet them all? No. None of them. No, I know a lot of people, but I didn't meet those guys. <laughs> I, <didn't know. laughs> I, do, I want a coloring book. Yeah, he, so. I do black and white ink drawings, these so fantasy fun. illustrations that I'm talking about. And, and he said this to me yesterday, and he's right. And should, they should become coloring books. So they'd be a lot of fun to go in and do it all, you know. I, I just wish I could show them to you. I don't like talking about my work without being able to actually share it with yeah. you. So go upstairs and see it. Yeah, you should come up and just come yeah. to my table, and yeah. I'll show you some of it. But um, yeah, 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 the stream of consciousness, that's my favorite stuff. That was the answer to that question. Right yeah. There. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, I am I, fortunate enough to be uh, in love and with a very beautiful woman. And she's nice. become my muse in most of my drawings. So that she is the image that you see when you look at my drawings. Oh, that's beautiful. She doesn't like it very much. <laughs> she, she, oh, God, she, she immortalized? She, oh, yeah. she, she's, she's come to, to, to approve after all these years. It's a little but, uh, Yeah, no, no, she's really, she's something else. She's something else. But she's in all my pictures, you know, so. Well, does anyone else have any more pictures? It's a great way to end that. That is great. Hey, hold on. Oh, okay, what? see you later. What, what? what are some of your memorable castings, like, you know, auditions, like, <laughs> One that you know the most, like the go to audition, like the one that the just, most like, memorable audition yeah. was not mine, but one of my students. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, it's the most outrageous <laughs> audition I've ever heard of. This is this gorgeous, like 25 year old guy, and he goes into this room, and the casting director was for a sitcom. I think I remember who it was, but I'm not going to give her name. And she had just had a baby. And she had one of those nursing um, machines on her breast. And so during the entire audition, this machine is going. <laughs> <laughs> As he's auditioning, this is a you know, sexy, gorgeous guy. And this woman has, is getting sucked, her breast is being sucked on by a machine. <laughs> and he had to audition. That is, the oh. worst, that is the worst, that's the most that's hilarious audition. Absurd. I may that put this absurd. in my book, too. This oh, God. Did you get the part? <laughs> I, I, I don't think he got it. I think he was probably so thrown <laughs> by this. <laughs> and she was completely nonplussed. Nonplussed. Just, sorry. And just like, you know, oh, Deal yes, regular now. audition. <laughs> Come on in. Yes. What about you there? How are you today? Okay. Oh, me Same too. Question yeah. Same question? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, it's hard to pinpoint because I probably, this probably isn't my most memorable, but it's the one I've mem remembered first, so maybe it is the most memorable. <laughs> it was basically my audition for Super, where I was playing uh, Rain Wilson's dad with, as a baby. He's baby Rain Wilson. And I was just playing this religious fanatic, and I, I, I was totally 
the guy when I walked into the room and I met James Gunn, you know, who went on to Guardians of the Galaxy mm -hmm. and stuff, but this was early. This was early on before that Step happened. Step up, Guardians of the Galaxy, DC Universe. I know, I know. <laughs> now he's DC Universe, in charge of everything. So I, I had these these eye distorting glasses on, and I had a porn stash. Basically, I had a, I had a big stat mustache that was natural that I'd grown for whatever I was doing at the time. It was working for me. I had a short sleeve shirt, you know, with a pocket and pocket protector, and my pants were hiked up, and they were too short, and I was wearing a belt. And my line, and I'm basically Eddie thinking, Deason. Yeah, Eddie Deason. Yeah, that's who I was. I was Eddie Deason. So I'm. That's I'm Jerry, Jerry, Stewart, Stewart. Jerry Lewis look alike. It was, I, except I wasn't. I was more just freakishly angry and uh, spanking Rain Wilson with a belt. Except it was all yeah, there was at the audition. There was no one else there, so I'm just. Busy. But I took the belt off. And, and you beat it. the child. And I beat the. I do in the. It's a flashback to the yeah. very beginning of the movie during the credits, and I. My line is, with God hide pictures of Heather Locklear in his closet, Frank! And that's, that's my whole thing. That's the whole bit. And I, I made James Gunn laugh, and um, he just, and he never met me out of that, out of that um, costume. And on my day of shooting, it was only one day, because it was only really one short scene, he was like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm good. And I was like, had the, all the, the whole, all the, the whole thing on. And I um, was like, okay, just do it, and I did it. Uh, but the audition was memorable only because it was, first of all, I was so excited. And um, I just, I don't know, I love going into an audition that way, where you're completely ready, and you're just like, I am the guy right now. I don't even need to say, hi, I'm Paul Taylor. I'm just like, hi, here I go. You know, I, I probably didn't say it was Paul Taylor, but it was, um, was kind of cool, because many auditions are not... You know, I'm just very business-like. How do they was, normally go? Hmm? How does an audition normally go? Well, for me, just for me, it depends on what it's for. But quite often, it's hi, Paul Taylor. Well, now you just put auditions on tape. It's completely changed. It, you, it's kind of rare to actually be a casting director in a room. You put yourself on you tape. Don't. And, and you, you do don't. all the work. You just do all the work. And then, uh, so every, anyone can audition basically, and if they, if the casting director would accept their tapes. But um, it's just very okay. First, you do your hi, I'm Paul Taylor, Horn, 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 five eleven, whatever I'm from. Horn. And I'm based in. And I'm based in, you know. And then you go from that to reading your sides and stuff. But when it's a character who has one line, and you're, it's the only role you're up for, and you can just freaking nail it, then you just go in there and it's like fantasy world, you know? What's the difference between auditioning like that and then like method acting? Well, there's, there's so many fine, there's so many details and nuances between different methods that people do use. Cause we call it method acting, which means the method, which is specifically Stanislavski, but but then there's there are so many different methods. So using right. the word But the, the method here. is Stanislavski yeah. and the Strasbourg yeah. 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 It's really it depends on the role. Totally depends on who you are and the role you're auditioning for. Do you need to, how deep do you need to go? Can you just go from the outside in, or do you need to go from the inside out? I mean, this is for me. For me. And I've, I've uh, studied Meisner and um, not so much method, but I know I understand it. Right. And I just also, it, it, some of the things that have happened with, with method actors, like Heath Ledger and other people who just, there's there's met, there's insanity. There there can there can be a crossover. I'm not afraid of that for myself because I've not gotten an opportunity to play the Joker. But um, <laughs> but but I for me it's just I've done theater for so long. I think I had to unlearn theater's bigger. You know I mean it's all the same process internally, but it's also on a stage. So all these eyes are on you, and you're doing it live. So it's because you're further away from the audience than you are with the camera. It's it's in a way bigger. So that's kind of now I know the difference, which is a wonderful thing because I didn't really start doing movies until Sin City, um, and then I started doing more and more movies, and that's and that's when I sort of now I can bring my film work that I've done. That's sort of how I do that. 
that to my theater work, which makes the theater work better, and it sort of they feed each other. Which it totally you, which, depends on your personal experience. What do you prefer, movie work or theater work? It's so hard to know. It depends on the script. It depends. Right now, I miss theater so much. I haven't done theater for three and a half years. To me, years. I think there's like more passion when it's theater. What is it? I feel like there's more passion when it's theater. It's, like you it's just so a different into it. It's a different energy. You yeah. put your your passion into a different place in your body almost because the camera is in film is right here, it sees all of your thoughts. But with an audience, they don't see your eyes that closely, so they don't necessarily see your thoughts. But they, if you're doing, if you're acting well, then the audience senses what you're showing them. They sense what you feel, but you may be faking it completely, and they believe it because you're presenting something. So it's like, it's acting is you know it's not magical, but in a way, well, it is kind of magical actually. Uh, I want I want to add to this. Um, yeah. <laughs> Before you start, yeah, um, we have a time limit, so we're going to be ending this in about four minutes. We're going to let Diane end it. Oh, yes, oh, absolutely. All right. Well, I auditioned uh, to, to answer your question back there in the last row about auditioning. I auditioned for Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which is my favorite movie. It's one of my favorites. Well. Yeah, precious, I love that movie. Precious. I got to meet them at Monster Rally really once. What? Oh, I can't remember his name. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, wait. I'm, 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 I, I haven't slept for two nights, so they let me finish because I, I, if I go off, I can't go back. You'll remember where you were. I have to find out. I have to find it back. That's so, me. Uh, so, um, when, I, uh, when I auditioned, um, I went into the bathroom and I read the size, and I had about 20 minutes. And um, I thought they're never going to hire me if I sound like me because this is a waitress, and I come from this very snobby area of Chestnut Hill in Philadelphia. And um, I know it well. <laughs> and um, so I, I decided I'd have a Southern accent. And I'm very much, a, I guess you would call me a method actor more than imagination. The best is when you marry the two, imagination <laughs> and from your own life. And. Um, I, there was something, I'm not going to tell you what it is, because you never tell your secrets, because, you know when you're a kid and you have a nightmare, and you run into your parents' room, and you tell them, you tell, you, you tell them, I'm up stage by a baby or an animal, it's, it's always that way in the film and TV, you never tell your secret, and you, so when you go into um, uh, your parents' room and you had a nightmare, and you tell the you tell the nightmare, and it weakens it. Yeah. You never tell your what you're using inside, for, because it weakens it, and you want to keep it really strong. But I'll just say that um, uh, when I say it was the, it was the dinosaur scene, and, and my first scene, my first line is, do you have do you ever have any dreams? And so I had had this dream when I was at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival a couple of years before. I'm not going to say what it is, but it was my biggest dream. And so I decided, okay, I'm just going to use that. I go into Wally Nasida, the casting director's office. I look at a light that's in the room. It reminds me of this thing. I had no idea what her room was going to be like. I, it was a soft light. I look at it, and then you just begin the scene with this trigger of my heart's biggest desire. So it is, I use a lot of method. Okay, that's it. That's, <laughs> it. that's pretty cool. Thank you. Like, yeah, that's great. Awesome. Yeah. That's Guys, we got to go back upstairs. You have stuff to do, but you're welcome to come up and visit us some more if you like. Thank you for coming. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Thank you. We all do. We do. Applause to you guys. We would not be here without you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah.